All right, in this video I'm going to show you how to use GIMP, which is a photo editor that should be on your laptop, in order to edit your photos. Now, you may not know where it is, so you can always go to your search bar and search for it. Um, I actually have mine on my taskbar. If you find it, you can right-click on it and say pinned to taskbar. See, mine is already on my taskbar, and it'll automatically bank it down here. Um, so if it's your first time opening up the program, it might take a little bit to get it to open. It might just take a few minutes for it to load. Alright, so this is what GIMP looks like once you have it open, um, which may be kind of overwhelming and confusing if it's your first time using it. Um, so I'm just going to go to File and Open. And so I have a couple photos uh, saved onto a flash drive, so I already know where they are. Um, and I'm going to hold down shift so I can open up a couple of them and just say open. Alright, so these are a couple photos of my children. So you're going to need to take a picture that is like has some contrast, that has some lights, that has some darks um, of yourself. Uh, and these are going to be self-portrait paintings, okay? Um, so I'm going to first rotate these because right now they're not currently in the right um, orientation and that's kind of bothering me. Um, so I'm going to go to image transform and then I can rotate whichever way I need to. So I need to rotate clockwise 90 degrees. Alright, I'm going to do that for both of them. So image transform and then rotate 90 degrees. Okay. Um, now before I do any sort of like crazy posterizing, I might want to consider cropping. Like I really want to focus in on faces, so I probably should crop out anything in the background that I don't necessarily want. Um, so I'm going to use my crop tool, which is this tool right here, and just crop in and, you know, select on what I want to keep. And then whenever I get it, then I can press enter. All right, so if I move over to Graham here, if I just go really come into his face, and then press enter. All right, so that's going to be probably your first thing, which is your crop tool. Now we're going to posterize, and a lot of times, if there's like too many colors, um, it gets a little bit overwhelming, especially when we start posterizing. So my best advice to you is to really kind of just take the color out. Um, so one way you can do that is just go into colors and go to saturation. And, um, and if we bring the saturation all the way down, that makes it a black and white photo. Just press OK. Um, and I'm going to show you the difference between the posterizing. I'm going to do one with black and white and then one with color. Okay. Now, so whenever we start painting these, we're going to really paint your dark values and we're going to paint the light values and then we're going to blend into the middle values that we're going to blend out those and your middle values are actually going to be your acrylic pore showing through. Um, so the middle values are really almost going to be ignored and we're really going to look at the dark values and the light values. And so that's why I want you to posterize. I'm actually going to print up two photos. I'm going to print up a photo that looks like this and then I'm also going to print up a photo that's posterized so we can kind of see where the values are like fading out and hopefully that'll help you with the painting process. Um, so I'm going to go into my filters. Oh, not filters. Um, I'm going to go into, let's see here, is it under, it's just under colors, and I'm going to go down here to posterize. All right, so right there you automatically see what the posterizing is doing. It's kind of like clumping the values. And right now the level of this posterizing is really only three values. Now I feel like for this project, if we um, make the posterizing 
with five values that'll actually be better. But again, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that I'm like missing a lot of like her mouth and her facial features, which makes me upset. So if I bump it up to six, that'll actually make it look a little bit better. Now I can at least see a little bit of her smile. Um, so maybe between five and six. So really what we're going to be doing is painting a lot of the highlights. We're going to be painting the shadowed areas and then we're going to be blending in towards, um, towards those middle values. So some of the middle values are going to be ignored. So I could even up it to seven and just know that the middle values is like where I'm going to be transitioning my, my values into the background. It'll make more sense whenever you see the video of me demonstrating the painting process. So this one I actually like a lot better because I can see a lot of the details of her eyes and a little bit more details of her face. So I'm going to keep it at seven and say okay. All right, so I need to save this so I can submit it for printing. So I'm going to go file and I'm going to export as. It's saving in GIMP is a little weird. Now I don't want it to replace my original photo because I'm actually going to need both of the photos printed. Um, so I'm going to just say this one, one posterized. And so it's going into the same place where it originally was saved. It's going into my acrylic temper course at week five, okay? And I'm going to say, export down here at the bottom. I want my quality to be high so I'm going to up it to 100 and say export. Alright, so that was with a black and white photo. Let's see the difference whenever we don't change it to black and white. So I'm going to go back into my image, nope, colors, and so I'm not going to actually change it to black and white. I'm instead just going to go right to posterize. Let's see what happens. So here it just kind of makes it crazy. We don't really see values. We see a bunch of colors, which is like very overwhelming. Um, right now it's on three. So if I up it to seven. So here we have some very like complicated um, like skin tones. And it, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for our brains to like kind of separate what's a highlight and what's a shadow. Um, so I would say that this is probably your more complicated option by keeping it the color version. Um, so instead, I want you to go into colors and go into saturation. Um, let's bring our saturation all the way down. And maybe if I could just click on it. Nope, I got to drag it. It's just not dry. There we go. And, and press OK. So now whenever I go back into colors and posterize, um, whoa, I can't even see any of his face in the three values. That's just not going to work. I'm going to up it to, I think seven looks pretty good. I can see some highlights, I can see some shadows, and I can see his facial features. And press OK. Again, to save it, I'm going to go to File and Export. I'm going to change my name to to posterized. Also make sure it ends with a dot jpg. If it doesn't you can go down here to the select file type and scroll down to where it says jpg or jpeg image and then press export. Again we always want our quality to be good so I'm going to up it to 90 and say export. Um, so those photos can be submitted to um, your your file so I can print them. Now I'm going to actually save um, this one. I just what I just did was control Z on my on my keyboard and I undid the posterizing. I need to save this as well so I can um, have both of them printed. So I'm going to export as and I'm going to change the name here to um, just um, black and white. So to black and white and I'm going to export. So that way I can print up, I have both of those printed so I can use both of them at, in my painting process. Um, so again if I control Z it's going to undo my posterizing so I can export and save that picture as well for so we can use both of them. Change that to black and white. Alright, so that is the process that you 
can use using or do using GIMP to uh, prepare for our self-portrait paintings.